Hey guys, how y'all doing? I'm here to give you guys a recap on the new chapter of Nanatsu no Taizai, or you can call it the 7 Deadly Sins, on chapter 254. Now, this chapter right here was pretty slick. That ending right there, OMG. But, um, many people are going to be honest, and I think I have, to, I have to agree with them. It's not like there's any chance that he might stand a chance. That's all I can really say. A little minor spoiler ahead, but if you read the chapter, you will know what I'm talking about. So, if anything else, let's go. We have to it that Zell just comes by and reports to his older brother, Meliodas, that, like, um, he came back empty-handed. So, I thought the Faith Commandment might come into my hands, but the freaking Berlinian girl just tricked me. <laughs> of course, like, Chandler does ask Kusak what he's been up to, but apparently we have to it that he says, this is... <laughs> This is my business. And we have to it that Zell just informs Me Meli Meliodas, Kusak, and Chandler that the four archangels have been revived and the magic power that hit, that hit him was no doubt Ruta Shells. We have to it that like um, Meliodas informs Zell just like him. He also saw a light of patch from in the direction of Leonis. So in likelihood, Elizabeth and the Seven Deadly Sins must have allied with the four archangels. Even <laughs> Zell just is like, so your woman ran away from you, huh? But Meliodas says, nothing they try they try to do will be a problem. If we gather all the Ten Commandments and I become Demon King, it will be all over. We get to see where Galen, who is petrified from his, uh, who is petrified, petrified from his commandment, is still alive. He's just conscious in his mind. He, he, he When he saw Esther Rosa, he says, okay, good. Um, t Tell Zell just to free me from my petrification. And Estros is like, nah, that's a pain in the neck. And Galen's like, what did you just say? And freaking Estorosa just destroys Galen and steals his commandment. Steals his commandment and go like, wow, that was pretty simple. Then we get, get to a scene with Arthur who's trying to reach a certain location to like, um, what you might call it, get near the castle. But it looks like to me he's not really getting, getting anywhere. Especially when his cat, Kath, is not really um around. And we have to it that... Petaline whatsoever is apparently messing with Arthur to make sure no one gets near the castle, etc. And therefore, she goes like, I've been getting a little hungry <laughs> a little while now. And we have to it that Kat says, I'm starving too. And she goes like, huh? And she and later on, Kat comes back to um freaking Arthur and asks him, where have you been? He said, food. What? And all of a sudden, I really said, what the hell just happened? Because... You know, Kath in this chapter, he actually ate Petaline, that lolly demon whatsoever, and I'll, I, I, etc. I'm thinking in my mind, how in the hell a cat like this managed to eat a demon? Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> and we had to it that Arthur's almost on his way to where the location of the Holy Sword, which is Zeldris, ends up asking him, What the heck are you doing here? How'd you even get in here? My commandment didn't even react at you a ha. At all. Did you come to steal the castle's treasure? Which Zell just asked him. And Arthur can only shake in fear because of like him. He realizes that Zel that's Zeldris of the Ten Commandments. And he gets bumped, bumped into Kusak who asked him. Lord Zeldris just asked you a question. Who the hell are you? <laughs> and therefore he announces that he's the king of this land. Arthur Pendragon. And we have to it that Zeldris says. So you're the king that Merlin is really concerned about. Now tell me, what business do you have for snooping around this castle? It must be something that you'd be ready to risk your life for. And he realizes that it can't be that strange sword now, can it? And we have to it that Cat tells Arthur to go and ends up using some kind of telekinesis power to distract Zeldris and Kusak. While like, um, <clears throat> we have to it that Zeldris realizes that it's a holy sword when Cat tells Arthur to get the holy sword. We have to it that he almost ran into Chandler, but we have to it that Arthur Mash is sneak by and he, he sees the sword that he's been looking for, which is Excalibur, obviously. I'm pretty sure it's been explained about that, and gets but before he could reach to it, he gets blasted pretty badly. And we have to it that he's getting closer to it and he sees Kath in the hands of Kusak and gets really upset about this. And we see Meliodas tells Zeldris and Kusak to knock it off as he is an acquaintance of his. <laughs> And Meliodas tells Arthur, this is no longer a place for a human like you. Now get to come. Now get lost already. <laughs> and Arthur asks Meliodas, why are you doing with the demons right now? And he realizes that that form, that magic, it can't be. 
And we have to that Meliodas announces to Arthur by saying, I've severed my ties with the seven deadly sins. I'm no longer the man you knew. <laughs> Arthur, who's really upset about this, who really aspired to be like him and remembers what Meliodas tells him, like, what's important isn't how others think of you, it's how you think of others. And we have to it that Arthur screams in total rage by saying, no matter what the circumstances may be, you betrayed those the seven deadly sins who always believed in you, and you betrayed your love, Elizabeth, and Kath tells Arthur to take the sword, and Arthur therefore pulls out the sword that he's been looking for, which is Excalibur, and he screams at Melee Otis, saying, I will, ne I will never forgive you for what you have done, and therefore, it says, casting away his admirations under the light of justice, this young man acquires the Sword of Hope, and Arthur has awakened, and his true power is about to be unleashed. So, it looks like to me Excalibur is a holy sword, apparently. We don't really know what this is capable of, but it looks like to me with Arthur grabbing the sword, he might have a chance against, like, um, Meliodas, Zeldus, and Kusak. But many have been saying, like, even with Arthur having his full-on 100% powers and pulling Excalibur out of that ground, I really highly doubt that, like, um, he would really actually beat all three of those high high rank demons, especially if Chandler gets involved. Which I have to agree with. I mean, even with Excalibur, we're gonna have to see how powerful this sword's gonna be for the time being, as, as Arthur draws out his sword and gets ready to clash, but who knows what. If Merlin senses this power, which I hope she does, she's going to go rescue Arthur and teleport him out of there, hopefully. We don't know, but we'll have to see. <laughs> Anyways, I thought the chapter was pretty cool, like I said. And apparently, we get to know that there's going to be a coloring spread next week, next chapter. And not only that, they say there's going to be a special present. So, I don't know what that special present is, but it could be two chapters or some kind of side story. I don't know, but I'm really, really, really excited. So, I can't wait to see how Arthur's going to play in this role with Excalibur, and hopefully he plays a part in the Holy War. Hope he survives, which he has to, because it'll be too stupid enough to kill him off, because he's way too important. After pulling out that sword, etc. So, if anything else, I'll see you guys in my next video. So, I'm off Zoro, people. Have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time, alright? Peace out. Bye-bye.